I'm starting a new playlist of updates and modifications I make to my 1990 Chevy Silverado pickup truck. And before I do that, I want to give you a tour of the truck so you know what it's like before I get started. So the first thing you'll notice about this truck is that even though it is 27 years old as of the filming right now, it has almost no rust on it. Like it is completely clean. These wheel wells on a much newer truck might be rusted out, but you can see they're just in great shape. And I'll give you a look underneath. And then underneath is the same situation. You can see like a little bit of rust on that drive shaft, but the body itself is just incredibly clean. All right, so why is this truck so clean? Uh, it's a 1990, 27 years old as of uh, the filming of this video right now, but the truck has 50,000 miles on it. So over those 27 years, it's averaged only about 1,800 miles a year. Now I got this truck from my stepdad, John, when he passed away, and he was a master of modification. He just loved to change things up, even when they were brand new. So he added uh, two sets of additional lights. He's got a set of white driving lights here and a set of yellow fogs. Neither of those are all that bright by contemporary LED standards. And uh, these guys actually don't even really stay focused very well. The connectors, connections are just kind of loose. So I think I'll probably end up changing those out. Uh, he also had light protective covers on the headlights. You gotta check this out. So these are the light protective covers on the headlights and oddly enough they just kind of pop on and they're plastic and they do affect the quality of light a little bit just because they've kind of yellowed and gotten a little dirty over the years but they've kept these headlights like brand new really really good shape and then there's one more really notable light around back which is just so cool i haven't seen this on a truck before and it's just really awesome he actually wired up a big set of reverse lights and I'll show you the where those are switched inside the truck. And uh, this one's a little bit bent. He must have backed into something, but I think I'll be able to straighten that out. These are really handy. And the reverse lights uh, run on a switch that's down under here, so it's a little bit hard to get to. And uh, those are key switched. And then he's got this totally DIY set up for the front lights. These are the white ones and then these are the yellow fogs. Now you might have noticed that there's a kind of funky do-it-yourself rack on the top of this guy and uh, no doubt about it these are actually Yakima old-school Yakima attachments here and then this rack is totally made out of two by fours and a piece of pipe. I do plan to replace it, but I gotta say it's pretty handy. One cool thing is that the rack actually sticks out further than the back of the truck. So that means that because this sticks out so far, when you flip up the gem top, you can uh, use this rubber band to keep it open, which is pretty handy. And I kind of like that fact that it sticks out. So the rack itself is pretty utilitarian, but I do think I'll replace it just because I kind of don't like the look of it overall. All right, so this is an extendo cab truck, and let's take a look inside. You can see it's got a bench seat, and uh, all the upholstery is just in really, really good shape. Uh, like I said, it's had very light wear. These are even the original uh, uh, mud mats down here, these old GM mud mats, and they're really thick and in pretty good shape, just a little kind of dated in terms of their looks. So it's got the basic jump seat in back, and this actually folds down and to reach the fold down lever on this back seat it's right under here so you give that a pop and then you can fold the seat down and it actually collapses up into place it's so hard to do one-handed uh, that just gives you a little bit more room here in the back and you can access this cargo uh, toolbox and in here is just your jack and uh, couple of tools and then he's also got like a cheater bar here in the event that you need more leverage on those uh, jack handles and then as far as the instrument panel is concerned it's pretty basic uh, you've got your uh, radio here 
and um, it actually looks a little 70s to me, even though this is a 1990 truck. This is your heat, and then these are your uh, instrument cluster. And I'll show you some footage here of the truck in action. Uh, this instrument cl cluster is kind of funny. Um, it looks kind of digital in the way that the numbers are visible, but actually it's an analog set of circles that turn and they're sort of painted. And you can see right down here, I'm at 50,000 miles now. I've actually put two or 3,000 miles on the truck. Um, with a couple cross-country trips. And then this is the shift on the fly four-wheel drive system. I've got it in two high right now. This is four high. And uh, if you step through the neutral gears, you can get to four low. Just a couple more little small features. Uh, my stepdad, John, uh, went ahead and built kind of custom boxes that go into the seat for this truck. And they're pretty sweet. He's got some straps and things in there. And then on this uh, front panel here, he attached a piece of wood, also painted blue, and then he just attached a fire extinguisher here, which is pretty cool. All right, let's look in the back of the truck. Now with the Extendo cab, this also has an eight foot bed. So the truck itself is actually pretty long. You know, it's got a long profile to it. So this is a metal gem top camper. And I've got a little bit of lumber in the back here and my fishing rod and then also some emergency supplies back in there. But uh, this gem top camper shell has sliding windows with screens, which is kind of cool. One of them's a little bit stuck. I'll have to work on that. And then he also set up some really sweet uh, cross cargo bars, which you can get at like truck stops. And those are not screwed in too tight, but just enough to uh, add a little storage up above. I actually put my fishing rod up there from time to time uh, with some bungee cords. And like everything else in the truck, the bed is just really, really clean. He's got it protected with this mat, and you can see it's kind of like the day he probably bought it. Just no rust at all, no scratches, in really, really good shape. All right, now no tour of a truck is complete without looking under the hood, so let's take a peek. So to my mind, some of the best features of this truck are under the hood. Uh, it has a supplemental battery. You can see battery number one right here. This has your main connections. And then it's connected up to battery number two over here. So it's got extra uh, juice. Those are run in series. And then one little really small feature that I have kind of mixed feelings about is that there's actually a custom screen here in front of the radiator, which is tied on by little pieces of string. And this screen obviously does work to keep bugs and insects out of the grill, out of the radiator, you can see that. But I think it also obstructs a little bit of airflow coming into the radiator. So I think I'm gonna pull it out, but I'm still thinking about it. It is kind of nice to have that clean grill. So that's my tour of this 1990 Silverado 2500 pickup. The other videos in this playlist will be about modifications and changes that I make.